So you know how barely anybody was happy with the final season of Game of Thrones? Well, good news, Netflix have gone and filled that void of disappointment with their latest historical drama film, The King. No, nope, there's no dragons as such, but there's plenty of decapitations, scheming, plots for power, about five of the cast of Game of Thrones, as well as a battle to match the Battle of the Bastards. It's time to talk about The King. The King is directed by David Michaud, the man that gave us the films Animal Kingdom, as well as the straight to Netflix film War Machine, which starred Brad Pitt. Michaud has teamed up with Netflix and Brad Pitt's production company Plan B to make The King, which stars Timothy Chalamet as a young Prince Henry, or Hal as he likes to be called, and he is the son of tyrannical King of England Henry, who's played by Ben Mendelsohn. Set in 15th century England, King Henry has torn England apart by waging war against everybody. Wales, Scotland, France. His own son, Hal, calls him a plague upon the country. And because of this, Hal wants absolutely nothing to do with his father, so he abandons his position within the monarchy. He lives amongst the people, boozing and whoring around on the streets of Eastcheap, minded by his faithful servant, John Falstaff, who's played by Joel Edgerton. But when King Henry dies of illness, Hal reluctantly steps up to his birthright and must become the new King of England something that he never asked for. He inherits the castle, the kingdom, but also the war with France that his father left behind. Adamant he won't be the tyrannical king that his father was, Hal strives to make peace with his father's enemies. But being king isn't as simple or as idyllic as Hal wishes it would be. It comes with some very difficult decisions, and once he gets a taste of power, so too comes the war with France. Gotta say, I was nervous for this film because other recent historical films such as Mary Queen of Scots or Outlaw King fell rather flat for me. But I was blown away by the king. It tells a riveting personal story about a boy thrust into a position of power and responsibility, while all the while building to this climactic showdown with France. It's a small, intimate story set inside a much bigger one. It's got another remarkably hefty performance from Timothy Chalamet. He's got a viable claim for a Best Actor nomination for next year for this role. Chalamet has such a gift for showing us the gradual transformation of his characters. And with the king, we see him go from boy to man to the titular king. We see the lessons that he learns from his council around him, who to trust, who not to trust. We see him naively make mistakes and how those mistakes mold him into the king that he becomes. His friendship to Sir John Falstaff is endearing to watch. Edgerton is a warm presence as the Northern Knight, but he's also a pseudo father figure for Hal. He's a wise and likable character. Edgerton has done a great job with him and he's got great chemistry with Chalamet. Let's talk a little bit about the action. First of all, I don't know if this film actually used a whole lot of CGI because there was one or two shots where I'm like, how the hell did they did that? There is a scene where they're on the fields with trebuchets throwing these fireballs at a castle, and I swear to God, it looks real. I'm dying to find out how much of it was done with computers. Secondly, the battle sequence in this film is one of the best I have ever seen. It's so thoughtfully planned out and built up towards. Michaud does this so gradually. He starts off with King Henry showing up in this field and sending one lone rider up over the hill to see what's on the other side, and that's where the French army is situated. It gives us a real lay of the land. It shows us the terrain, the geography, and the surroundings. It really gives you a sense of the space and really puts you there. And then it gives us this little scene with just a handful of the main characters strategizing battle tactics. And when the battle actually happens, Michaud throws you, the audience member, right there in the center of it. You are knee deep in the mud and you feel the claustrophobia and the chaos from every direction. It's visceral viewing. One thing that I especially loved about David Michaud and Joel Edgerton's script is that it takes its time to show us the aftermath of how it feels for Henry after he's killed somebody. This is something that often gets overlooked in TV and film, but it's great to see how a character reacts to having killed someone. The film stops for a moment and lets us feel how Hal feels. I really appreciated that. As Falstaff says to Hal, nothing stings the soul more indelibly than killing. And whilst we're on the subject of the script, I have to say that Michaud and Edgerton's choice of vocabulary for this film is inspired. The discussions between the characters are just peppered with this lovely use of language. It is a very well-written film. Robert Pattinson also has a small but substantial part in this as the prince or 
Dauphin of France. It's a pompously amusing role for Pattinson, and the accent can only be described as stereotypical, but it's so nice to see Robert Pattinson in a role that's so against his type. I also admired how cinematographer Adam Arkapo shot this with natural light. It looks gorgeous and it couples nicely with Nicholas Patel's beautiful score. Nicholas Patel is the guy that did the wonderful music for If Beale Street Could Talk. In the end guys, I thoroughly enjoyed The King. I was so swept up in the characters and the story. It's so beautifully shot and performed. So I started to ask those three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Absolutely, I'm a big Timothy Chalamet fan. He is magnificent in this. The film is magnificent. I'm definitely gonna watch this again. Question number two, am I gonna recommend it for you guys? It's another yes again, guys. There are a few shots which are a bit graphic and bloody, particularly within the battle sequence. So if you're not a fan of that stuff, then maybe not watch it. But to everybody else, I would say yes. Go and watch this film. It is going to be released on Netflix, but if you have the means to watch it on a cinema, you should because it's got a basil that is just as good as something from Game of Thrones. Imagine if we got the Battle of the Bastards on a cinema screen, okay? That's how good it is. Go see it in the cinema if you can. And question number three, what score am I going to give it out of 10? I'm going to give The King a 10 out of 10. There you go, guys. That is my review of The King. But remember, this is just one bloke's opinion. I want to hear from you guys. What did you guys think of The King? My quick question for you guys today is, who do you prefer, Timothy Chalamet or Robert Pattinson? It can come down to heartthrob status, acting ability, or just general hotness, but whatever your thoughts or opinions are, be sure to let your voice be heard in that comment section down below. If you guys do like my channel, want to help me out, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. If you want to stay up to date with all my coverage from the Venice and Toronto film festivals, be sure to click that subscribe button, and if you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, all those links are down in that description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Hairfield, and I'll see you next time.